Where are all the good guys? The guys interested in commitments and the guys who have drive, ambition. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another story post, guys. I'll put this article up on the screen if you want to check it out. But you guys read the title? Let's just get into it. So, perspective. Where have all the good men gone? Young men who are ready for committed relationships are in short supply compared to women from women at university of virginia where are all the good guys the guys interested in commitments and the guys who have drive ambition and purpose this is not to say that such men are entirely absent at the university where we teach and attend school they are just in short supply relative to the women with a clear focus on their future and interested in a serious relationship. Take Cece, a rising senior. The majority of the guys I've encountered here don't want to commit to an actual relationship. They haven't grown up. They want to hook up with girls, but that's it. Many of my friends and I are frustrated with the lack of maturity our, our guy friends exemplify. My parents met in college, which was common among their generation, and are about to celebrate their 30th anniversary. Meanwhile, I have one year left and don't foresee myself dating anyone. The relationship frustrations of women like these are rooted in a broader problem. They do not have a ready pool of good men to date, partly because many of our nation's young men are floundering as they make the transition from adolescence to young adults. This problem is visible in our schools, colleges, and universities in today's marketplace. Young men are increasingly less likely than women to enroll in college and less likely than women to apply themselves even if they land in college. A growing number of them are also idle or underemployed as they move through their 20s. Our young men problem is rooted in a range of factors. The rise of electronics, which distract young men from education and work and have come to replace traditional avenues of social relations. The absence of models of pro-social masculinity that furnish norms for male engagement in school, work, and relationships as they move into adulthood. A culture that discounts commitment. But a new report from the Institute for Family Studies, Life Without Father, suggests that another issue is in play. Too many boys have grown up in homes without engaged or present fathers, which has left them especially unprepared to navigate school, work, and relationships successfully. Too few good men. Here, one of the signs of the young man problem is that they are simply absent from grounds, our words for campus. At our university, women outnumber men 56 to 44. Nationally, it is worse. There are almost 60 women for every 40 men across the country. This means that a large minority of heterosexual women cannot find any man to date on their college campuses. And even when it comes to men who are in college, female students are often disappointed with the, with the quality of the guys they find, even at the University of Virginia. Sometimes it is just very frustrating to me when I want to tell a guy I know who is living his life in some sort of unsatisfactory way, said Isabella, a junior. I have to hold myself back from being like, what are you doing? The way you are living is contributing to your unhappiness. I would say the qualities of guys I generally come across are not necessarily guys I would date, said Claire, also a junior. Claire has noticed, at least in school of architecture, that the girls seem to be driven and just focused on academics, a little more serious about it than guys. Tommy, a rising senior, attests that girls are much more focused and deliberate and, sin and sincere about their work than most of the guys that I know. 
He sees a kind of prolonged adolescence in many of the men at the university. This notion of prolonged adolescence is not simply anecdotal, but a central concern of researchers who study young men. In his book, Guy Land, sociologist Michael Kimmel describes it in this way. In another era, these guys would undoubtedly be poised to take their place in the adult world, taking the first steps toward becoming the nation's first professional entrepreneurs and business leaders. They would be engaged to be married, thinking about settling down with a family, preparing for futures as a civic leader and little league dads. Not today. Today, many of the young men poised between adolescence and adulthood are more likely to feel anxious and uncertain. In college, they party hard but are soft on studying. After graduation, they drift aimlessly, aimlessly from one dead-end job to another, spend more time online playing video games and gambling than they do on dates. These observations are born out of trends in academic performance and on-time graduation. Women have attained consistently higher GPAs than their male peers. Per a study examining the GPAs of students at select Florida and Texas universities, which showed average GPAs of 2.67 and 2.85 for men and women respectfully. Fewer of men who attend college end up graduating than women, with 50% of women graduating on time compared to just 40% of men, according to a recent report in the Wall Street Journal. Perspective. Higher education just isn't built for men right now. This pattern extends beyond college into the 20-something years. I would say they are not as serious about their work as men were several decades ago. Fathers and friends. Part of this problem is due to the shifting character of family life in America. We know that children with absent fathers are less likely to thrive on a variety of measures of academics, professionals, and social success. These people are ill-fathered, Tommy observed. They don't have the right moral fiber that would lead them to use that freedom well, so they become idle and complacent, and they don't really feel challenged, and they feel bored. Well, let me give my thoughts on this. So it's a bunch of women highly upset that they can't find the right guy. Hmm. Maybe these guys have seen you just jump from D to D to D. Now, anybody that's been to college, went to college, you know, you know, these girls jump from D to D and it's outside of college too. But, but since this article is focusing on this college campus and everything, we all know it. It's, I, now, I will say, when they get to the junior, senior year, those girls, some girls do get a little more serious. Like, oh, I want to find something serious. But freshman, sophomore year, you were slobbing someone down in studio. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, we out we're out one night and you go home with this guy you bang my friend and my other friend and then you top me off like dang y'all just go buck wild we don't take you serious i'm not about to take this i'm not about to get serious with this girl and i know 10 other guys on campus that smash no what are you just going to straighten up now just because you want that wedding it's all for for clout someone told me that once a woman told me that once women she a woman told me women just want to get married for the clout nowadays and i truly believe that you know it, no no guy wants that and then they're just in here shaming men or men aren't built for college they're not doing this i know a ton of men that went to college include myself and we we did very well in college and outside of college. What are you talking about? They're just putting guys. Oh, they're idle. They're online playing video games. Man, these days you see women on Twitch playing video games. With their chest out and all types of stuff. Trying to get some attention. What are you talking about? There's a number of people 
growing up these days and 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 playing video games, making money on Twitch and things like that. I don't just try to just put that on guys. Look, you can't find a husband. Boo hoo. Too bad. Too bad. So sad. Guys, let me know what you think about this article, please. I will catch you guys at the next one. Wife cheating and wants a divorce. Mm, mm, mm. First, they need another ship to jump on before they hit you with the divorce and we're having trouble in our relationship. Mm. He says, let me start by saying that my wife wants a divorce. And at first she made it seem like it was all my fault. Talks about how I didn't appreciate her. I wasn't there enough, which is a lie. I'm not emotional enough. We don't agree on politics and religion. But it's been that way since day one, 11 years ago. And our vows aren't that much different anyway. Never been a problem before. At first I thought that I was the problem and I believed most of this until I found out she has been talking to someone else. I confronted her about it and she said he's a good friend. He's just a friend. Yep, so he's just a friend. Mm -hmm. She met this guy three months ago. Yes, three months ago. Never met him before at all. When I found out it was more than that by looking at cell phone records, almost 8,000 text messages in two and a half weeks, she couldn't deny it anymore. She was asking me to not tell anyone about him because she doesn't want people to know without running and ruining her picture perfect reputation she liked. I got the I love you but not in love with you anymore. Fell out of love with you. He makes me happy. I laugh with him like I never laughed with you. Again, she's only known him a little over three months and the texting only started the beginning of September. She also met him at the gym, physical therapy office. They got it in. We have been together for 11 years, married for five. We've known each other since elementary school, and she was always the one chasing after me all, all the years. We had a good marriage in 11 years together, so she can try to rewrite our history all she wants and make herself believe she hasn't been happy for a while. Yep, they love to do that. It wouldn't have come to this anyway, even if the other guy wasn't involved. Everyone keeps saying that the reason she's giving up are just excuses and not reasons to leave a marriage, and that the real reason she is leaving is because of another man, which I agree. She just keeps saying that everyone is using him as a crutch, and that's not her real reason. By the way, I was blindsided with this as well. She never told me how she feels about any of this to give me any time to fix it. She also has clinical depression as well, and I'm wondering if that's anything if that has anything to do with it. All of her family is on my side and hasn't been speaking to her since this all started. The only people she's talking to about this is her sister-in-law, who she's living with her new man and her therapist. When she moved out, she took all of our wedding photos, wedding album, and her wedding dress. Why? Guilt? Doesn't this just sound like a stereotypical case of cheating and thinking the grass is greener? Wow, let me give my thoughts. Yep, sir, that's exactly what it is. And your friends and family, who everyone who's saying that she's leaving for another man, they're absolutely right. She's leaving for another man. She thinks the grass is greener on the other side. You guys been together 11 years. She's bored. She wants a new toy. She's going to lie and rewrite history all day long. That's not the reason. Oh, you, you don't romance me anymore. You don't do this anymore. She wants a new shinier toy. She doesn't care how long you've been together, how many kids. She doesn't care. And that's so unfortunate. And I have to say, is it even worth it? 
Is it worth? What's the point of getting married? Why? Just so one can, just so, just so someone can eventually get tired of you and just leave you in the dust. All these stories, people are being left, the way they're being left is so messed up. They're being blindsided. The woman, she starts cheating. And then all of a sudden, I want a divorce. I'm not happy. I haven't been happy for years. Why didn't you tell me this years ago? We could have fixed it. I don't think there's any fixing it. Because you just want to sleep with someone else. You want to be with someone else. Just tell the truth. But you know, you know that's not going to happen accountability let's check out these comments down here someone said there's no better way to say it but she's gone and while later she may have a change of heart you'll do well to end it in your own mind too you're on the right track from your other thread to here she sounds committed to a d until Jim boy moves on then she may reach out to you as her solid foundation, but be firm. Do now only what's best for you. Good luck. Absolutely. And Jim Boy will. Jim Boy isn't feeling her like she's feeling him. It's all. It's that's always the same story, isn't it, guys? She'll she'll come running back. She'll come running back. Someone said she sounds like a typical cheater, justifying her behavior. They do that so they don't have to admit it. Someone says she is rewriting your marital history and relationship history simply to justify her affair. You know it. You know it. Obviously, she's throwing you under the bus to justify her affair. My ex did the same back in 2009. Consider yourself fortunate that you found out about the affair and she moved out. Now it's time to put her in the rearview mirror and get on with your life. She doesn't deserve you. You are getting a second chance that most people don't get. Remember that. And don't make the mistake of taking her back when her affair fizzles. Which it will. Once I found out about my wife's affair, she was history. And life has never been better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Beautiful. Shame. Let me know what you think about this in the comments, guys. And I will catch you guys at the next one. Ninety six. Look, if you guys want to check it out, here's the title. You can check it out. Go look for it. Look at it yourself, man. But you guys read the title. Let's just get into it. So, ninety nine year old Italian man divorces his ninety six year old wife after finding her secret love letters from the nineteen forties. Ninety nine and ninety six guys. A 99-year-old Italian man is divorcing his wife of 77 years after he stumbled across letters she had written to a secret lover in the 1940s. The damning discovery days before Christmas led the galled grandfather to confront his once two-timing wife immediately. London's Daily Telegraph reported, the 96-year-old woman identified in court papers as Rosa C. reportedly confessed to having an affair 60 years ago and then tried desperately to persuade her hubby to stay. The scorned husband refused and he filed for divorce despite a romance spanning nearly eight decades. In that time, the couple amassed five children, a dozen, a dozen grandchildren, and one great-grandchild. The uncovering of the letters inside an old chest of drawers was the final straw for a relationship that had already been rocky. Ten years ago, the husband moved out to live with one of the sons, but returned weeks later. The Italian press attributed the bitter breakup to the couple's southern roots. He is originally from Sardinia, while his wife was born in Naples, the Telegraph reported. The former lovebirds met in the 1930s when Antonio was a military officer based in Naples. Once the divorce is finalized, the pair could take the record for world's oldest divorcees. The previous oldest couple to divorce were Brits, Bertie and Jesse Wood, both aged 98, who ended their 36-year marriage in 2009, the Telegraph reported. Whoa! Let me give my thoughts on this.
So guys, this has been going on for a while and what, I, what I'm talking about is this. How many stories have we heard where the wife's husband is in the military and she's cheating? Guys, it happens all the time, right? Yes. This man was serving in the military. While he was doing that, she was writing love letters to some other guy she had been seeing. You know the possibility of probably, I don't know when they started having children, but some of those kids may not be his. Maybe their oldest isn't his, you know? I'm not mad at this guy. You know, he may have a fortune saved up. You know, he may have things that he knows when he goes, he's just got to pass it on to his, you know, his children and great grandchildren and, and grandkids. And he's like, no, she betrayed me. You don't get to get away with this. See, we, see, they'll, cheaters will cheat. And no matter if they got away with it for three months, three years, three decades, it doesn't matter. It'll always come back to bite you. Karma, man, you don't, you don't screw around with people and lie to people and do crazy stuff like that. And she's in court begging. This 96 year old woman is in court begging, please don't divorce me. I need you. He's like, no. And he's already walked away. <laughs> They're already having problems in their 90s. Guys, I'm just going to, you know what I say all the time. No relationship, no marriage. It's not worth it. It's not worth it anymore. And apparently back then it wasn't worth it. She's cheating on this man in the 1930s. She made her bed, now she has to lie in it. You guys read the title? Let's just get into it. So, talkaboutmarriage.com. I cheated with a felon, and now I'm pregnant with lots of questions. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. My husband and I have been together for a total of eight years. We got pregnant fast and have managed to stay together this long, but not very much longer. We have two little boys, three and seven. Our relationship has always had issues, but we moved in with his parents over a year ago. And long story short, I was kicked out. Oh. We started going through mediation and I was out on my own by this point. My husband begged and pleaded for us to get back together, to be a family again, and I did. I cheated on him right before we split the first time, and ever since we've been back together, I thought and hoped that eventually I would feel the spark again, or enjoy intimacy, and all I can do is despise anything of the sort with him. We've been back together now for almost exactly a year. And I cheated on him with a guy who is now locked up and will be looking at a minimum five years to life. Whoa. I'm guessing that he will end up with around 10 years. We had just gone on vacation to my brother's wedding across the country when I realized that I'm pregnant. I was sleeping with the boyfriend the whole time and not my husband up until right after my boyfriend went to jail and this was only three days before we went on vacation. So if he wasn't in jail, I would be more than likely be with him, living with him like a family. But now I have, have that to be concerned with. Plus, I'm fighting my own case. Similar type of case, but not the same. And trying to stay out of jail for the sake of children. Whoa. Oh my, my, my. But if I end up with a felony on my record, this could hinder getting certain programs to help me do this on my own, which is another issue. I am also concerned with telling my family I'm pregnant, not by my husband, and that the baby daddy is in prison. I've already had two, two live births and two abortions, and really don't want to abort this baby. So I either keep it, or just deal with it, and just get through it, or I can abort it and potentially have a shot at keeping my family now together regardless of how unhappy I am. Wow. Please help me out here. I just have no idea what to do next. Yes, unfortunately, I do have strong feelings for, for the boyfriend. Wow. 
let me get my thoughts. And I could see some comments down here, and just like this comment says, adoption is a good choice, more so in this situation. I that's exactly what I was thinking when he, the boyfriend's in jail for probably life. She's facing jail. It's not your husband's child. Adoption. Her situation. You and this boyfriend, what kind of stuff are y'all into? You're facing the same type of crime you said? He's facing life. What the heck? Your kids, your tell your husband he needs to divorce you and get the kids and keep them away from you. You sound very unstable. You don't sound like a good person at all. Now you're planning on getting rid of the baby, not by adoption, but getting rid of the baby, acting like nothing ever happened, and being unhappy with your husband. Oh, man, you know what's scary? I could see her doing, going through with that, doing a termination, staying with her husband, pretending to be happy, until this guy gets out if he gets like five or ten years using her husband's money to send him money to take care of him in jail until he gets out then all of a sudden she's leaving ma'am you do not deserve this guy his parents kicked you out for a reason <laughs> his parents kicked out his wife 